Hey, welcome back to No Hype Beer Reviews. Unless it's your first time, then welcome. Please consider subscribing. If you do, hit the notification bell, get all the updates. We're gonna say for today's video. So it's Thursday and Thursdays. I try to do Thursday's Thirsty Thoughts, come up with a topic. Hopefully it's engaging. Get the comment section blowing up. So um, this one I've had written down on my list for a while and I'm just, I didn't have, I'm like, Sometimes during the week I get an idea, I'm like, let's do that, or someone says something in the comment section, whether explicitly asking for the video or like sparks interest. Um, so this one I was like, I don't have anything, so I went to the list. And as you can see from the title, it's what's the strongest beer you've ever had? That's what I had on my list. Then I added, and was it good? Um, so um, it's kind of fitting because I did just recently have a very high alcohol beer. If you saw Tuesday's video, it was courtesy of Keith at 93 Lumber, spelled out. Thanks again, Keith, really appreciate it. Um, it was a stout, it was called Shipwreck, the name of the brewery is escaping me, um, but it was a 21% stout, and it was uh, aged in uh, cognac barrels, and um, more of a liqueur kind of a thing, like it was still, you know, it wasn't carbonated, uh, it was from 2019, um, and so that's, you know, a higher one, that was very good. Uh, just to spoil it a little bit, the one for me that was the highest was not that good. Um, so that one... Pretty close, 21%. Um, and then uh, if you watch the channel a lot, you know I've done uh, some Utopias reviews. Well, first, Free Will's Dystopias. That one's pretty high. I don't remember if it's into the 20s or not. Um, that one was very good. Also courtesy of Keith. Sam Adams' Utopias, courtesy of myself, um, are high. Uh, love those. Those kind of those vary a little bit in ABV. Um, obviously, some of those dogfish head ones are like 15 to 20 percent. Uh, I like most of the ones I've had. That coffee worldwide style had like coffee, oat milk, one or two other things. wasn't a huge fan of that. I'm actually going to revisit that sometime in the near future. Um, uh, but anyway, let's get to the winner. So this is 2011, and I'm in Amsterdam, and we had toured you know, like a farm, we had seen uh, um, cheese, you know, being made and, and uh, uh, clogs be being made and sold and windmills. We went to Delft, saw the porcelain, like we're just having this great time over there. But we're in Amsterdam specifically, beautiful city, just FYI, beautiful, uh, what they call it, uh, uh, Venice of the North. Absolutely beautiful city, very walkable, a lot of people riding their bikes, uh, friendly people, uh, great food and, and beverages. And we're walking, and we walk by, a, I, I do not 100% remember the name of the place, but it was something like World of Beer, or Beers from Around the World. Like, it had a name like that, or a sign like that, and it had a different name for the place. So we go in, amazing selection. Um, the part of New York State that I'm originally from is called the Southern Tier. Uh, it's not that close to the brewery Southern Tier, but it was so funny. I'm walking around, we're looking at the different beers. They had, you know, drafts, they had bottles and cans. And I saw this one from Southern Tier. It was uh, Farmer's Tan. It was an Imperial Pale Lager. And I'm like, yo, I think I've had everything from Southern Tier. This is back when they are doing those 22 millimeter, uh, or I'm sorry, 22 ounce bottles. And, um, you know, they had like that chocolate, uh, uh, mocha, creme brulee, they had a couple barley wines that were really good. Uh, but anyway, um, and I'm like, man, I've never seen this in the United States. I've never seen this in New York. I'm from the Southern Tier. It's, you know, I don't know, maybe four hours to the brewery from where I grew up, three and a half. You know, I mean, I guess pretty close, you know, when I'm talking about being in, you know, Amsterdam uh, out of New York State, you know, fair enough, pretty close. But it was like so funny across the Atlantic Ocean, I finally found this beer I'd never seen near me from Southern Tier. But that's not the answer. So we're looking, we're looking, I'm like, wait, you guys have Brewdog's Sink the Bismarck? I'm like, you know what? I don't know if I'll ever get an opportunity to try this one. I'm sure it's not even good. Um, so I ordered it. If you know anything about it, 41% ABV. They were going back and forth. I don't remember the name of the brewery out of Germany. And like Brewdog's would have the highest one and this German brewery would, uh, hence the name Sink the Bismarck. And they eventually collabed on one and kind of stopped the, the pseudo feud. Um, but at the time, it was either the highest or one of the highest. And it's one of those ones that they do the ice process to get the ABV up. It was They called it a quadruple IPA. It had like four different hops in it. If I forgot to say the ABV, it was 41%. And um, they gave me like, a, it was like a, it looked like a mug, but it was little. It was probably an ounce in this like little mug. 
so I tried it. I think one or two of my other friends tried it. And it was an experience, but it wasn't like a particularly tasty thing. For example, I was at a, um, went to a, uh, um, I want to say bottle share, not a bottle share, uh, a beer festival. And we got done with this awesome beer bar up in Syracuse, New York. And they had, uh, no, actually it was a cigar spirit kind of a place. This was after we went to a cool craft beer bar. And we're, it, it was, I can't think of the name of the place. People from that area will know exactly what I'm talking about. We went to the Blue, Blue Tusk, but it was this other place, and they have like their liquor wall, but it's like an old school library where they have one of those ladders that you know has that's on wheels. And keep in mind, we were you know we had a DD. The rest of us were pretty in the bag and huge beer nerds. We look up at the top shelf and they had a Utopias. We're like, yo, how much is that? And um, whatever it was per ounce, you know. So we're like, let's do two ounces. There was three of us, three or four of us who were going to try. So we're like, let's do two ounces. We all get a decent, you know portion of it and like I've been chasing that dragon since and that's why I bought you know spent the money to buy bottles of Utopias I bring that up to make this next point after having sink the Bismarck there was no tracing the chasing the dragon it was like yeah I'm good on this you know tried it one and done you know it wasn't like awful just like very syrupy but not in a good way it it had um, a, a, a hop punch that I, you know, you would think I would like. I'm currently drinking a nice pale ale. It's also funny. I'm drinking a pale. I'm talking about the highest ABV beer I've ever had, um, but it wasn't like hoppy, intense in a good way. And uh, sorry, it's making me thirsty. So to me, it was definitely one of those experience beers, not a Mount Rushmore, not a chase after, not a hey guys, I recommend you find that beer. No, it was nothing like that. It was just an experience. But yeah, 41% Sink the Bismarck from Drew Dog was the highest one I've ever had. I had a, a, an ounce pour of it across the Atlantic Ocean. Uh, but yeah, so that's my answer. Uh, that's the beer. It was not good. So how about you guys? What's the highest ABV beer you've ever had? And was it good or not? Comment section below. Let's get a conversation going. Once you're done doing that, make sure you check me out on Instagram and Untapped. It's no hype beer reviews of both those places. So please like, comment, subscribe, and most importantly... Imbibe. Cheers, everyone.